Hello guys, welcome to Sip Code, and today we are not looking into another type of code, but we are looking into version control system for your project and code base. Um, so we'll be looking into Git and GitHub and how we can use these tools to not only store our code base but to also collaborate with other developers and contributors into our project. So without wasting any of your time, let's get to it. So this will be the landing page uh, for GitHub. And what you want to do here is if you do not have an account, you can essentially just type in your email over here to sign up and it will basically then get your sign up started, uh, fill in the details and you can complete your GitHub uh, sign up. So I already have an account. I'm just going to sign in and uh, go straight to the dashboard. So uh, if you can see also here, there's a try GitHub Copilot. So Copilot is the AI um, uh, implementation for GitHub. So you can essentially um, integrate this to your IDEs, your IntelliJ, your Visual Studio Code. I'll do an entire tutorial around this on how you can use Copilot to assist you in writing code or improving your code quality to get a faster um, uh, delivery time on your feature changes or just your code quality uh, as per usual. But we'll do an entire video on that. So for now, let's continue with our GitHub um, uh, implementation. So I'm just gonna sign in over here. I'm gonna use Zip Code Studio and I'm just gonna sign in just like that. <clears throat> so now this is gonna take me to the uh, dashboard and I can see here uh, some activity on the feed. There's uh, a, few, a user that has uh, started following us. So that's good news. And then if I just click on here to go to my repositories, I'm just gonna click on support studio so that I see all the repositories. You can see popular repositories. There are people that actually like the uh, repositories, the people that pull the code, you can see some people fork on those code. So they basically pull different um, projects as and when uh, required. There is 82 contributions um, in the last year. So this basically means as I create new repositories, create new um, commits or make changes to um, my, uh, my project, all those contributions are going to be um, tagged here over this sort of a calendar um, uh, sort of a view. Uh, so what we want to go to is the repositories. You can see I have about 50 repositories um, available over there. So if I click on repositories, you will see the entire list of all my repositories that are available. And all of these essentially do have a tutorial in the channel. So if you're new to the channel, please do check us out and you will see in, in all those videos, there's a, a repository that I link in the description down below. So you can check those uh, or any of the features in Spring Boot, in AWS um, integration. If you're interested in those, please do check those out. But for now, let's proceed with what we are doing. Uh, so you can see here, I can also um, create a new repository if I want. <clears throat> so I can, re I can name it whatever I want. Let's say uh, GitHub. Uh, let's say beginner uh, demo and to check for availability of this repository name and if it is going to give you a thumbs up then you can add a description and also choose the visibility whether or not it's public or private to uh, make sure that you expose uh, to the public what you want people to see otherwise keep it private you can have a readme you can have a dot ignore based on the stack of the project you can define uh, what dot uh, ignore file you want it to be. So let's say Angular, you can have an Angular.ignore, so you can just choose the Angular. Or uh, let's say it's Java, you can just select the Java one and it will do the same thing. So uh, the last thing is the licensing. If you know the license of your project and what protection you need, you can just apply that particular license to your project. But for now, uh, this should suffice and we will create. we can create this particular um, repository, but I'm not going to use. The, I'm not going to use the browser create. There is a GitHub. Uh, let me just go to Git. GitHub desktop version. Uh, what am I typing here? GitHub. Yes, desktop version. So if I go to the uh, GitHub desktop, I essentially get to do the same or perform the same functionality as I would in the browser. So over here, I still see my repositories and I can also um, do um, commits or add um, repositories as when I want. And I can basically 
uh, let me just show you on one project that I'm working on in IntelliJ. So this project doesn't have a, um, it's not yet in uh, source control or version control. So what I'm going to do is add this GitHub demo project into my version control. So you can see here, there's no branch that is highlighted here. So once I add it into um, GitHub, it's going to highlight the branch that I'm working on. And then from there, Git will start tracking those changes and I can off branch and I'll create pull requests. So let's do that quickly and see how it looks. So instead of creating a branch here, I'm not gonna create it. So I'm just gonna go back so that we can see this view over here. <clears throat> And then I'm going to go to my GitHub uh, desktop and I say file, add local repository. Then I'm going to choose a folder here where my project is. And I'm going to go to where my project resides. You can see GitHub demo and GitHub demo is the project that we have on our IntelliJ. So I'm going to say open this uh, project and then I'm going to say add. And it's going to flag it as it does not exist in my Git remote, so then I can create it as a repository. So I'm gonna say create, and I'll give it the same description as the name, which is GitHub demo. I'll initialize the readme, uh, the dot ignore, I'm gonna say Java, and the license, I'm gonna say none, because it, it is a demo, so it should be fine. And then now that I've created my uh, repository, I need to publish the repository. So if I go to my remote Git and I refresh, you see this it doesn't show over here but if now i go back and say um, this publish repository so i'm going to click on publish and it's going to give me this keep the uh, the code private i want to make this a public so i'm, I'm going to untick that publish repository and now it's publishing this repository to remote which therefore means if i go to git uh, to github and i refresh now I see GitHub demo. So we have a repository that we've created. It is Java based and it has the correct dot, uh, dot ignore. And now if I go into here, I can see my branch, which is master branch. So the master branch or the main branch, it's uh, basically the same thing. Those, branch, those names are interchangeable, but you can uh, have a master branch or a main branch, which is uh, technically the same thing. So now if we go back to our IntelliJ, you will see that we have our GitHub demo and now it's pointing to master branch. So now what happens if we want to start making changes and cleanly manage those changes going forward? So this is what we do there. I'm just gonna pop quickly into draw.io uh, draw <clears throat> to just show you the branching um, strategy in, uh, in Git or uh, using GitHub. Uh, so what we have, in our project is, uh, let me just uh, remove this uh, particular uh, example here. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. So I'm gonna restart this. So let's say this is the whole project, right? And this whole project like this, this is main or master branch. So the whole project, Essentially, all the code base is in main or master, uh, depending on the name that you prefer. So that branch has all the code base. The live code should be the same code as the one in master. So it's always the live code. Main or master is the live code, right? So if we want to make changes to this particular, um, to this particular code base or add a feature into this particular project, what we then do is we take this snapshot of this branch and we do what is called um, branching off of it. So by branching off of this, we then create a new branch, which is a copy of main. And this branch, we'll call it feature one, right? So let's go in here and we're gonna say, now we have feature one, right? So feature one at this particular point it's the same as main or master branch at this particular point. So in this particular feature, once we make our changes, uh, so then we're going to, uh, let me just do this over here. We make our changes here, right? Uh, let's do that. So now feature one with changes. 
So now we have we off branch master and we have our feature one branch. And from that, we make our changes and we have feature one with changes. And once our changes are verified that they are correct and they are working, what we then need to do is to push those changes back via a pull request. So what we do then is to create a pull request to say pull these changes back into this branch over here, right? So now this process is where now we have a pull request that says take these changes and put them back into this version of the code so that this code has the latest changes that we did on feature one, right? So all of this, it goes through the testing cycle, verifications, integration testing, and all those other uh, testing in between um, on the SDLC. But essentially, once we are happy with our changes, we then create what is called a pull request back into this snapshot of our code base so that both these and these are basically the same image. They have the same code base at the end of the day. So we branch off main first and then we make our changes then our feature one has all the changes that we want we test those changes in feature one once we're happy we then pull those changes back into our main branch so let's do that quickly so that i can show you now that we've um, added our github demo so what we want to do is make changes to this api over here right so let's say for whatever reason um I want to change this. So create API, uh, let's say, is not available. Just going to make a small change like that, right? But this is wrong because I'm making the changes in the live code, right? Which is master. So which means what? I need to create a new branch. I can create the branch in IntelliJ because IntelliJ is intelligent. But what I want to show you is over here in GitHub, we can just go there and create a feature branch and we're going to call it feature one then i'm going to click on create branch from master which then it will create my feature one from master as a highlight here we create this feature one from master and we get our feature one the same as master so everything is the same at this point now i'm going to go back to my intellij and i'm going to run a fetch fetch is get everything that happened in remote to come reflect on local. So we fetch all of those, it comes through, then I go to remote. In remote, I go to origin, you see this feature one over here. Then I want to check out this uh, branch. I check out feature one branch, and here you can see now I'm on feature one, and I will say create API for whatever reason, uh, I'll write whatever. So create API, uh, is now available to service clients, right? That's what we, let's say, now we've implemented the create API and it's able to um, be called or be consumed by external um, clients or consumers. So that is our change. Now we have made our change. We need to commit these changes back. So again, I can use IntelliJ, but let's use GitHub desktop just to show you that all of these things work interchangeably and you can use all of these tools. So if I go here in my Git, uh, Git desktop, you will see that there's a controller change and it highlights what I changed. I removed the not yet implemented to is now available uh, to service clients. So now this is the change that we made. And if I want to commit this, I write my message. Uh, I can say update create um, API or I can just say, yeah, yeah, update is fine. So I can just say here, implemented the create API, something like more detailed, more descriptive so that um, your, uh, your collaborators or other developers can understand what the change was. Then I can commit the one file which we changed. Then I commit that. And once this is committed, you will uh, see, uh, push this to origin. I can push that to origin over here. And now it's refreshing my repository. Now, if I go there, so in GitHub, 
you can see that feature one had recently pushes, uh, uh, recent pushes two seconds ago, right? So now I can compare and create a pull request. Now a pull request is this flow over here where this feature one needs changes and we need these changes to reflect to the main or the master branch. So let's do that over here. Compare and create a pull request. So we create that pull request. We, we say update uh, create API, implemented the create API, and we are happy with that uh, messaging. And you can see I can just do a create pull request or create draft pull request, right? Uh, and then let me just create this pull request. It should be fine because a draft is just saving it as a pull request, but we're not merging it as yet. But in this instance, let's just create a pull request. And now it's done. So you can see at the create this um, pull request is open. We commit into master from feature one. And this is this pull request that is created from feature one which changes into the main branch. So if you go back there, now there are no conflicts with base branch. So obviously in a pull request, you need to manage conflicts. Conflicts is when there are files that uh, are having changes on uh, the branch you are going into from the branch you're coming from a branch that you are coming from. So there are files that might be out of sync to say there's a version ahead uh, and you need to be up to date with that version before you push or you merge your changes. So you need to resolve the, those conflicts and then you can merge your changes into uh, the branch that you're going into. So in our case, everything is looking good and we can merge our pull request. And to take this even further, there are rules that you can add and implement over here to say you need uh, maybe two approvers, three approvers, so other developers or senior developers can have a look at your PR, approve, and then you can be able to merge. But those are now the inner workings and the rules and the validations, checks and balances that need to be in place. But essentially, this is how you can use GitHub to version control your project and have a collaborative um, environment um, with your team and with other teams as well. So uh, I hope this covers the basics that you need to get started on GitHub. For any um, more deeper and uh, deep dive into how GitHub works, please do let me know in the comment section. Uh, but for now, that's about it. Uh, until next time, cheers.